Welcome to another tip edition of God Hockey. Today, I'm going to show you how to release the pocket in your catcher or trapper or snag or whatever you like to call your goalie glove. It's not an overly complicated process, but you need to stay on your patterns and be consistent to make sure you do it right. There isn't much more to tell you that I didn't cover in the video, so let's get to it. Starting off, make sure you've got everything you need. I'm going to use a paracord for the middle section of the tee. I've got a 120 non-waxed skate lace. My thread needle. Got a lighter, burn those ends off. And don't forget a pair of scissors because you're going to need to cut these down once you're done. Just keep everything handy, but keep everything out of the way. So starting off a paracord through the middle. What I'm doing here is I'm just threading these through the, basically, I guess the front most holes of the T. I'm going uh, through the top. If you go through the bottom, you end up with a, a longer a longer section of the cord that's on the inside of the glove. And I, I, I would just rather not have it there. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go uh, top side. Now on this glove, these frontmost holes actually are punched a little bit smaller than the ones that go through. So if you're doing a glove like this, you may want to use your thread needle to just sort of expand those a little bit. So now that I've got those through, I want to keep I want to keep the cord as even as possible on the end. And just so I don't have a gap at the beginning, I'm going to thread those through. just so I've got a bit of a starting point. Notice again, I'm going under as I go through. We wanna keep everything consistent. We wanna keep, if you're going under on uh, on one side, you're going under on the other side. If you're, and you wanna keep going under all the way through. You can do over as well. I, I like the way the laces sit in. So here I am, I'm gonna loop through that lace that I just pulled under. And I'm going to skip the hole on the other side that I'm going to go through with the other end of my lace. So I'm just going to wind that through. And notice, if you're going from one side to the other, continue doing one side to the other. So again, pulling through that first hole. And I'm just going to loop through itself. Sorry, my hand's in the way a little bit here. But as we go... Now I want to make sure everything's nice and tidy, so I'm going to pull underneath the hole, the, the part of the string that I crossed over, and then I'm going to loop around and go under again. So you'll start to see your, your weave, your basket, you'll start to see that as you get through the first couple. Uh, and then I'm just going back through. And essentially, I'm just going to repeat again. So I'm going under the same part of the lace that went through that hole. And I'm carrying it across to the other side. And when I'm going from the other side through, under itself, I'm doubling around the other lace that's coming from the other side. Here I'm going to show you here. The, here's the the way I would do the paracord if I'm using the thread needle. Uh, essentially, you can uh, melt one end to get it softer, make it a point, and it actually will just sort of screw right into the underside of the needle. And then you can just allow the needle to pass right through the holes again it's you're working with a smaller space here so I tend not to and let's just speed it up hopefully you've got the gist of it you can always back up back it up a little and go over it some more but again we're going under itself and then we're looping around twice the other side 
and back into the next hole. There's lots of different ways you can do this. Uh, this is this is kind of the way I like to do it. It it doesn't use up a ton of lace. It gives a lot of space for the for the t for the the double T to open up when the puck hits it. But there's lots of different ways, different types of uh, ways to weave it through itself and then weave it through the other. And some use more twists and some use more loops. So now we've got that through all the way to the end. So I'm just gonna pull my first string right through in just a second while I finish off the last through itself, around and around the other side. It gets a little bit trickier when you get to the end because you don't have as much room to maneuver. And we're just pulling that through. And we're not finished the glove completely, so all I'm really gonna do here is just check everything. Make sure your loops are all gonna be right around the same size, just so it looks so it looks cool. And then because I'm not really done, I'm not really ready to trim everything off yet, I'm just gonna knot that up high just to prevent anything from pulling back through and I can still go back. It's not always as easy to figure out once you're looking at it when it's already done, but there's my up and over, my double loop around through to the other side. Gives a lot of space. You really allow that, allow that T to open up when the puck hits it and that really, really cradles it nicely. So typically it's gonna sit kind of like that. And then when the puck hits, that's where you really see it open up. Pow. And that's what's gonna give you that nice break for the puck, really cushion it nicely. And that's the middle. So once we start off each side, we just want to find a hole that's close to the end, edge of the T where it goes into the thumb or goes into the finger side. And we're just going to let the lace go right through. This one was a little farther away from the thumb opening. So just use the pair of needle nose pliers. Get that through. Tie a knot in one end. Just going to trim that off. Now, we don't want to repeat a last video, so I'm just going to keep those scissors nice and far away. <laughs> so that's your end. So we're actually just going to tuck that inside. And again, you can use the pliers to do that just to kind of shove it in out of the way. Now, the holes on the on the top part of the T um, were actually uh, a little bit on the smaller side. And the HD that's inside the T is a little bit stiffer. So it's a little it's a little thick. And all those pieces have to line up. So I'm just using my thread needle to give myself some space to make sure all the holes are lined up. So I'm going under the T and back out through the top. Again, consistency, you always want to make sure your laces are always going the same way. So if you're going under, keep going under. I've seen guys do over, I prefer under. Up and in through that second hole. And now we're going to the first hole on the T. 
again, this is the tighter one, so I'm gonna grab that thread needle just to open up a little bit of space. Just expand that hole just a little bit. Up and under. Now this is kind of the, really one of the trickier parts. When you're doing your first line down, this is the only time you're going immediately through the last part of lace that you uh, made a loop with. So we're just gonna cup, come up from underneath. So you'll see I'm going through the lace that's going through the T. So my first loops going forward, I'm not gonna be doing that. I'll be going through essentially where I've just gone through right now. So that's two, that's three, from my first part of the lace. And now where the glove lacing is going through, basically holding the back of the hand and the thumb together, I'm gonna thread right underneath there. Sometimes it's a little bit tight. You won't always be able to get the tips through. So again, keep that thread needle handy, or even a pair of needle nose pliers. Just lift that up a bit, just to give yourself uh, that little bit of space to get it through. Because I'm using a, a skate lace, it has a, a wax tip on it, so generally it is quite easy to get everything through. So I'm not too concerned about using the thread needle. If you're using paracord, then the thread needle helps. I actually, I, I, I typically don't, but again, it's really about um, your level of experience with it. So again, we are skipping that initial part of the lace that just went through. So we're skipping there instead going to the, basically the mid section. So one, two through there. And then another through the last loop. And back up through the top. As you go, by the time you get on your second or third line, you'll start to see your basket. You'll start to see your weave sort of take shape. And you just wanna check and make sure that, you know, how I'm going under. If I was to go over, you'll notice um, basically a gap in the weave. You'll notice uh, uh, something that just doesn't look right. And if, if you do that, uh, no shame, just uh, pull back through and, and sort of uh, redo it from that point. So again, not going through the last part that went through the T, we're skipping that. Essentially what we got is two loops in the middle and then you have the the top the top of the T and then you've got the bottom of the glove. So you've got uh, always making uh, three loops. On a glove that maybe only has the one hole in the T, as you can see on this Brian's glove, there's two. You could basically have it so that you're only making a two loop pocket instead of a three like on this one. Essentially it doesn't make uh, much difference. It's not like the, it's not like the holes in your weave are gonna let a puck go through. You just have to sort of adjust the, the tightness that you're doing and yeah, again, only going through two loops instead of three, so. You'll really start to notice by this point uh, that your basket is really starting to take shape, that your, your weave is really starting to look like something. You notice too, when I, when I'm, as I'm doing this, I start to pull the laces. I just wanna make sure that nothing is gonna be um, too tight. I wanna make sure that my weave is very balanced through the rest of the, through the rest of the glove. So I'm just gonna make sure that I'm not leaving any parts too loose and certainly I don't really want any part of it being tight. I want the pocket to be able to pull back when the glove hits. Uh, but again, I, I mean, this is not something that we, 
need to leave specifically loose anywhere. All right, let's speed up the action. One thing you do probably want to check for is that as you're going, you, you want to make sure that your lace isn't twisting. If the lace is going through fairly flat and straight, it'll just, uh, it'll just look a little bit better and um, it actually gives it a little, little more of a, a pullback. The twisted lace has a little bit of tension on it, so sometimes it, it makes things a little less even. Just like I mentioned with the middle section of the T, as you get closer to the end, you've got a little bit less room to maneuver. So it's always good to just take your time uh, when you're doing that, just making sure you know where everything is going, making sure you're not leaving any gaps. And it was right there that my phone died. Here's part two. All right, moving on to the next side. I went ahead and I skipped over the part where I tied the lace in and got the first uh, loop started. Again, this is the only spot where we're going back over the part of the lace that immediately goes into the T. If we don't do this, we'll have a little bit of a gap there and then Instead of having three loops, we're only going to have two loops. Again, everything all moving in the same direction. So we're taking that this lace straight under uh, the actual glove lace. I don't want. I don't want to loop it back. I'm not going over top of that lace and going through. Here we are, much like we did on the opposite side of the glove. We're just finding the, finding the next, uh, the next part of the lace to go through. Up through the top and then through the T. So again, for the part of the lace that we're pulling through right now, we're skipping over that. Just make sure everything is good for length. Again, we want everything to be even. We want consistency in the pocket. And yeah, let's not let that lace get twisted. Let's make that nice and straight so it, so it looks good.
Beautiful. Now on this glove, the finger side of the pocket, uh, the lacing on the glove wasn't quite as tight, so this I actually found this side of the glove to be a lot smoother. And again, we just keep going. We're just finding the same, the same loops this, through the same holes over and over again as we go, just keeping everything even. Again, by the time you're on the second or third row, you should start to see your your basket start to see your weave starting to form and if you happen to miss something do an over instead of an under by the time you're this far through you'll you'll see the imperfection you'll see where you've gone wrong and again just pull the lace out through i know it's a bit of a pain but pull the lace back through uh get back to where you made that uh you made that whoopsie and then you can you can just uh, start back from there and you're good to go. No one will ever know you made a mistake. Well, I don't want to occupy your entire day watching me do this, so let's uh, let's pick up the pace a bit, shall we? Just in case you're wondering why I use the paracord, I always think of the 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 paracord as being stronger and the skate lace being softer. So I don't mind having something that's a little more robust through the middle because that's somewhere the puck is uh, actually hitting. Um, the 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 skate lace is a little bit fluffier too, a little bit uh, I guess thicker or wider. So if you like to be able to see the puck in the glove and you're looking down through the center of your tee, then it's a little bit easier to see through there uh, as well when you use the paracord. But there's no real preference. I've done skate lace uh, through the middle as well on some gloves. I think there always seems to be a debate about using skate lace in pockets over uh, the conventional paracord. And a lot, of, a lot of people will talk about how the skate lace being a little bit softer tends to cushion the puck a little bit more. I, I don't really know if there actually is a quantifiable measurement for uh, how much or how little uh, cushion you gain out of using a skate lace. Primarily, I like it in my gloves because I just think it looks cooler. It is a little bit softer, so I'm I'm sure it does have a little bit more cushion. But in terms of 
how many more saves you're going to make, how many fewer pop-outs you're going to have, and things like that over the course of a hundred saves or a thousand saves or ten thousand saves. I don't really know whether or not you're going to get um, really measurable results. So if you just like the way it looks, if you like that little bit of a softer feel, just go with that. And here we go, folks. We're almost done. Where'd that thread needle go? Oh, there it is. Just want to give myself a little bit of extra space for the last one. Pull that through, we're all done. So I'm just gonna cinch those laces down. Make my knots, and again, I'm not gonna pull out too much. I'm not gonna worry about it being uh, super tight, really. If the glove's gonna eventually Pull a little more lace out over time. I don't mind. I don't mind having uh, having some extra at the back. Remember, we tied those knots up pretty high on the paracord that went through the middle. So now I'm going to cinch those down a little bit lower since uh, since we're all done there. Snip, snip, and let's be very careful again. Leave those scissors right there. Just melt those ends so nothing's gonna fray on us. Careful, it's hot. Pocket's good, ready to go. Everything's got a little bit of spring, a little bit of pullback. Please remember to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.